2024 has been a thrilling year in the UK's mobile telecommunication scene with numerous exciting and technologically significant developments happening over the last 12 months. The most memorable of which I'm going to round up in the 2024 mobile networks roundup edition. So let's get started. The first topic I'm going to cover is standalone 5G. Now, standalone is key in the 5G ecosystem because unlike the prior deployments, which were non-standalone, standalone does not require the use of 4G anchoring and therefore is better from a capacity deployment point of view as well as allowing other features like network slicing. Now, in 2024, O2 launched their standalone 5G back in February and it predominantly is 700 megahertz N28 in both rural and urban areas and then N78 with spectrum in the 3300 to 3800 megahertz band in more busy locations. The N78 bandwidth deployed in an area on O2 depends on a number of different factors including radios deployed and for that matter the radios and spectrum usage of Vodafone in that location as well. However it is possible to achieve very nice numbers on sites with 40 megahertz of N78 such as the one behind me which when I've locked to N78 only is delivering well over 550 megabits per second physical throughput on just the 40 megahertz N78 SA. In some areas it is also possible to find standalone 5G on 2100 megahertz and 900 megahertz on O2 with a number of these carriers being able to be aggregated dependent on your device capability and certainly with a high-end device and 80 megahertz N78 in the area it is possible to get nice numbers on O2's standalone network. We even saw standalone deployed on a small cell from O2 this year but that will be covered in the small cell section. However O2 standalone 5G has not been the only operator standalone launch of 2024 to impress me with BT's EE launching much later in 2024 but also doing a very impressive job with a multi-layer standalone deployment in both rural and urban areas that performs very well. EE's spectrum strategy in some ways is quite similar to O2's with N28 700 megahertz being common in both rural and urban areas and then N78 being more urban predominant. However, EE has a substantial amount of other SA deployed with N1 2100 megahertz, N7 2600 megahertz and N3 1800 megahertz also being deployed extensively across the network such that even in quite rural areas you can have substantial standalone bandwidth and in urban areas the TDD standalone is supported well with capacity from FDD carriers as well. This screenshot from Dorico shows quite how well quad carrier aggregation on standalone can perform on EE even in a quite busy area. EE's standalone also supports voice over NR where you can carry your conventional phone call over NR without having to drop down to 4G to carry the call which is very good and obviously maintains time on SA. So then last but not least Vodafone. Now, Vodafone launched their standalone 5G capability in 2023. However, as device capabilities have evolved, so has the performance one can get from it. 
So with modern devices and four-way carrier aggregation on Vodafone stands alone now, you can have 90 megahertz on N78, supported by N8, 900 megahertz standalone, as well as N1, 2100 megahertz standalone. And this is quite common in urban areas. In more rural areas, N1 and N8 tend to be the predominant layers. So two-way standalone carrier aggregation. Vodafone's standalone 5G, especially with N78, works very well in most cases. And indeed, I've heard much positive feedback about it. So all in all then, 2024 has brought us a lot of pleasing standalone progress and it will be exciting to see what happens in 2025 in this area. Thank you for watching part one of the 2024 UK Mobile Networks Roundup. Coming up in part two, small cells, small cells, small cells, network performance takes off at airports and much more. I look forward to seeing you there.